Uh, good morning, everyone. Once again, uh, good morning to people. Good morning. <laughs> morning, how are you? <laughs> Great. Okay, as introduced earlier, my name is uh, Mr. Lobwalia. The work we are presenting here is based on our work uh, with WIDA and using the micro ZAMOT, which is the Zambian version. And what we are doing here is trying to just look at alternatives uh, for social assistance reform uh, in Zambia. And so I'll be presenting on two programs. The first one is uh, the Pharma Input Support Program, which was started in 2002, which basically provides subsidized inputs to farmers. This was a poverty reduction program that was uh, put in place as a response to deal with droughts that the country had faced in the late 1990s. And part of that was basically to look at poverty reduction, food security, and then address issues of, um, and then address issues of nutrition as well. Um, over time, the program has reformed. Uh, so the program initially started and would distribute 850 kg bags of fertilizer to farmers and, uh, and, and bags of seed as well. Over time, the number was halved. So farmers receive uh, four rather than eight 50 kg bags and two bags uh, or 20 kg bags of maize seed. So over time, despite implementing this program for more than two decades, uh, poverty reduction has been very slow. Uh, latest results, which we have in the country, um, still show that 76% of the rural population uh, live in poverty, despite implementing um, this program for uh, over two decades. Uh, of course, there are also other issues around the program. Partly, um, stakeholders have raised concern and local evidence has shown that the program has poor targeting, uh, also wasteful expenditure, and then there is also evidence that you have other beneficiaries, such as those that are successful, land-owning small-scale farmers and commercial farmers are also benefiting um, from this particular program. Uh, the program also has a hybrid system in terms of delivery. The government at some point um, introduced what was known as an electronic voucher system, which allowed farmers to obtain these inputs from uh, the local private agri-shops as opposed to physically delivering the inputs because then there were high costs that the government had faced in terms of procuring this fertilizer and then transporting it across the country to deliver it to farmers. However, government seems to have still pushed back and moved to physical delivery. Uh, when you look at other aspects as well in terms of uh, expenditure, in 2021, the government had planned to spend uh, 5.7 billion kwacha, but resulted or ended up at the end of the year spending 12 billion kwacha which is more than twice what they had budgeted for. So in that year spent uh, over 590 million kwacha uh, on this particular program. So this also had led to, as some of you may know, Zambia getting into debt distress and also uh, reaching a point where we're trying to restructure our debt. So this has been quite a topical program. In terms of um, single items on our budget, this must be one of the largest um, single items that government spends its money on. And so when we look at reforming this particular program, we were interested in looking at firstly, has it been meeting its objective on poverty reduction? And what does that mean? And how can we pick other programs? So one of the things that we looked at is reforming it into an existing uh, program, which is a social cash transfer. So consideration on how do we move uh, to reform this particular program that's ineffective, uh, has high expenditure, and move it to uh, a social cash transfer program that is delivered uh, with relatively uh, cheap administrative costs. And so one of the things that we did is we basically considered what this program is like. So the program firstly um, gives net benefit in terms of kwacha terms, 1,700 kwacha, which translates to 142 kwacha per month. So farmers are required to contribute a 400 kwacha, and this is basically in the simulation, <coughs> and then the input is valued at 2,100 kwacha. So this is basically in the model. But in reality, there are also other costs. For example, government imports this fertilizer. So the cost is far much higher than uh, the 2,100, which is actually uh, simulated in the model. Uh, and then obviously, like I gave an example, so farmers are supposed to uh, have a net subsidy of 1,700 kwacha per year. But we see that in 2019, the actual expenditure was 3,000 um, kwacha per year, sorry, it was 3,000 uh, kwacha years per year per farmer. So it means the difference between 1,700 and 3,000 
uh, which is a difference of 1,300, goes into the administration costs, or at least gives you an idea of what the administration costs, because the farmer is only receiving the 1,700. So again, this just shows the high administrative uh, costs that are attached to this program. Then we considered moving or reforming uh, this particular program into the social cash transfer program, which basically delivers at the time uh, 90 kwacha per month to each uh, beneficiary household, and households with members that have severe disabilities receive double this amount, which is 180 kwacha. So if you look at this uh, particular program, the social cash transfer, it delivers in a year to each beneficiary around 1,080 kwacha compared to the cost of the farmer input support program. Now, one of the things that, um, like I mentioned, we basically um, create this hypothetical policy that we model uh, using the 2019 policy system of uh, the Zambian version of the model, which is the micro -Zamod. One of the reasons why we use the 2019 model was we were trying to uh, simulate in normal times. So we try to avoid uh, the shocks or at least uh, the data being affected by the shocks of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So we basically uh, look at that and then we focus on what the public expenditure would look like and uh, the poverty reduction. So in terms of um, our reform, one of the things that we try to do is we completely um, abolish the farmer input support program, uh, and then redistribute those savings to the social cash transfer program. Um, one of the things that we also try to do there is we expand the eligibility criteria. As I mentioned earlier, on the farmer input support program, we actually have farmers that are not vulnerable, so households that are not vulnerable benefiting. So what we do as part of the reforms is we expand the eligibility criteria for the social cash transfer to be able to capture those farmers that ideally would be vulnerable and would completely lose out their benefits so that they are then captured under this um, new reform social cash transfer program. The other thing that we do as well is uh, we basically increase uh, the benefits that are received to this household. So like I earlier mentioned, uh, households were receiving 90 kwacha per month. We basically um, increase this almost more than double it to 200 kwacha per household in this new program. And then we also double it 400 kwacha for households that have members uh, with uh, disabilities. And like I mentioned earlier, the other thing that we do is we also expand the eligibility criteria. And so this is what uh, the results basically look like. So in terms of the expenditure on social transfers, uh, at baseline, government is spending 3.3 billion, and then this increases as a result uh, of the expansion. Firstly, like I said, we increase the transfer amount, and then we also increase uh, the number of beneficiaries. So what we then have there is uh, the impact results in a 1.1 billion additional expenditure for the government. Uh, and then when we look at, um, from the baseline, this was the cost. In terms of uh, the FISP, this is what we model, and this does not take into account administrative costs. So after the reform, we have zero there. The social cash transfer benefits increase significantly by 2.3, and then other benefits um, remain untouched, other social benefits. Uh, when we look at the total number of beneficiaries, at the time, we had a total number of beneficiaries of 1.6, the combination of the two programs. After the reform, that number significantly drops to... Um, to 6,000, uh, to, sorry, 670,000. So almost uh, a million are moved out uh, of this particular program. And then basically what we do here is uh, the number of beneficiaries of this new reform program increase slightly. So meaning we have 50,000 that we now, we're falling under the farmer input support program and under the expanded uh, criteria are able to be captured under this particular program. Um, so then we also look at what the impact is on poverty. So one of the things that we did firstly, I forgot to mention, as we were considering the two programs, is we initially completely start with abolishing uh, the social cash transfer first and look at what that does to poverty. And then we also completely abolish the farmer input support program and see what that does to poverty. Firstly, to be able to get an idea of which program has a higher impact on poverty. And so what this gives us overall is that this is with the new reform we see that uh, we have a minus 1.7% reduction in poverty rates across all households. This is despite removing almost 1 million uh, beneficiaries that were sitting under that particular program. We still see that we achieve, um, we still achieve the goal of reducing poverty. 
We also see that uh, the reduction is much higher amongst female-headed households, uh, households with children, and also households with older persons. And then, obviously, um, just to confirm what the findings are, is that um, the reform of moving to the social cash transfer compared to the farmer input support program is more effective in uh, reducing poverty. And then, obviously, one of the things that we consider is that um, the poverty impact is relatively small, quite significant, but relatively small at 1.7. But we note that the amount of transfers that are received to the household or provided to the households is still very small. Uh, the 200 kwacha that we double from the 90 kwacha is still far below uh, the poverty line of 229 kwacha for households. So we see that uh, in the recommendations, obviously, uh, one of the things that we talk about and which is very important, I won't skip up, I won't talk to these because I've already talked about them, is that in terms of um, maximizing our poverty impact, we need to look at increasing uh, the quality of uh, the, imp the quality of the transfers, which basically looks at improving the capital value. Thank you.